All right, what is up, you two? Today, I have a very special guest. This is my girlfriend, Kathleen. Hi. Yeah. She is a high school math teacher, teaches geometry. And? Algebra. Yes. Now, as of this year. <laughs> but basically, she wanted to make a video with me, right? To For you guys to kind of get to know me a little bit better. She's gonna ask a couple questions, which I don't really know what she's going yes. to ask. So we were in the car the other week and I was like, how about I do a Q&A video with you? And so here we are, we're about to do it. All right, okay. so bring it. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so my first question is, what was your first sale on Amazon? Okay, so if you guys don't know my story, I did not start off with private label. Most of you guys who follow me on this channel follow me because I do private label on Amazon. But the way I started was I was started doing retail arbitrage, which is when you go into stores and you basically buy stuff and flip stuff basically from, I think Toys R Us it was literally the first store I went into. I read about it, Amazon online retail arbitrage, went into Toys R Us, bought maybe like a hundred dollars worth of toys but i can't recall what <laughs> exactly yeah, was I the remember, first thing i ever saw i sold. remember going to all the toys r us stores i remember that yeah so <laughs> i used to ask kathleen to basically shop with me and pack some u-haul boxes worth of goods to that ship was, to amazon that was his way of hanging out with me <laughs> yeah. what making money and hanging out is fun right yeah you're right you're right i'm not gonna complain <laughs> All right, so next question is, well, this this kind of ties in with the last response that you just had. So how long did you do RA slash OA until you decided to try out private label? I did RA for... Wait, how long have you been doing Amazon now? I've been selling on Amazon for, I think, three years Three now. years, yeah. Yeah, okay. this is going on three years, but I did RA and OA for about a year before I even touched private label. I always thought you would, you had to have like a lot of money for private label. And when I started out, I was a college student. Yeah. But I saved up some money from my first job ever. And I saved about $5,000 to start my private label business. Okay. Okay, next question then is, what is one tip you would give to someone that is just starting PL? One tip to someone that is starting private label. What is that? <laughs> My very first tip would be to be careful of who you follow, I guess, in the Amazon space, right? Always, always challenge, I guess, what learnings that you have within the Amazon space. I think while there's a lot of free information out there, it doesn't mean it's always the most accurate or up-to-date information. Or, or the, the best, best yeah. right? Or the best information. So I'm a bit biased, you know, follow me, follow what I do. <laughs> I mean, he's gotten this far in three years. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I sell on Amazon, I live, breathe it. So compared to some other people who might just teach Amazon, might have a different perspective of like theory versus like actual experience that I have. So find people in the Amazon space that, you know, have the experience. That would be my best tip. Okay. This isn't a question on my list, but who helped you with your first private label product? Uh, me and Kathleen. I did. <laughs> I remember I took pictures of his first private label product in my backyard with my DSLR camera and you still have it up, right? Yeah, I still <laughs> use the same images. I did send it to Fiverr to get it touched up a little bit. Um, you didn't tell me that. Well, that's normal. You gotta <laughs> make sure it has like a pure white background when you- I use Photoshop. Images. My Photoshop skills didn't, weren't good enough. Well, I added a little more shine. Oh, so okay. <laughs> okay, let's go back to my list of questions. What was your worst product and why? Worst okay, product. my worst private label product I ever launched would have to be Whirlpool mm. water filters. Water filters are basically the little things that go inside your refrigerator, right? Because you like put your cup to the fridge and you yeah. get water out. So I was selling those and I was killing it for like a good three months. And you know, right after I placed my second order and the shipment was already coming, I got hit with a pen infringement right so i didn't do my research that well and you know i thought i could get away with it amazon didn't seem to be too strict at the time this was maybe two years ago yeah but basically i lost maybe 
five, six thousand dollars at least oh, uh, no. because I couldn't sell it through like audit inventory. So okay. I had to liquidate it through eBay and basically get rid of it that way. So did you get rid of all of them? Um, actually, I just realized there's some in my garage <laughs> that are just sitting there uh, oh, no. doing nothing. <laughs> but more of a story is make sure you do research on patents and trademarks before you move forward with your product. That's a good advice. Okay, who is your idol in this Amazon space? You know, I think I... Oh. One of the reasons I started a YouTube channel was because I wanted to connect with other people in the Amazon space and I wanted to share my journey. Yeah. And along the way, I, I guess, met who are my idols now. Yeah. And I would say my idols are going to be like three people, uh, technically, right? Okay. So uh, the first two are going to be my partners, Nick and Fernando. Oh, uh, they so sweet. <laughs> well, they crush it, you know, on Amazon. They're probably going to do like 15, 16 million uh, this year on Amazon. We wow. have separate private label businesses, but it's really cool to see the way they've like structured their organization, how they can, you know, kind of take like a week off and nothing will explode <laughs> within their business. Um, That's nice. Yeah, and like the team they built, right? To really scale it that much. And you, you know? haven't met them. Like it was how... You met them like what, like a year? How long have you known them? I met them through uh, the MBS group, the Million uh -huh. Dollar Seller Group, just New York Boost, uh, which oh, yeah. is an Amazon uh -huh. conference. I think I was right with you in Cancun right before. And then that, you so. flew to New Yeah. Or no, Playa del Carmen. Yeah. We were, and then we were you in flew... Playa del Carmen and I flew out for that. Yeah. And that's where I met, I guess actually all three of my idols, well, two of the three of my idols, right? <laughs> so I met Fernando there. Yeah. Um, I accidentally took his room <laughs> at the Airbnb. He was like, oh, excuse me, this is my room. And I was like, all right, well, great start. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so I had to pack all my bags. And then the other person I really respect um, and idolize in the space is Leo Lemon. So a lot of people, you know, like crush it on Amazon, but Leo crushes it on Amazon and crushes it by helping Amazon sellers, right? So he creates like software that like- Yeah, has he's really, the tech like, guy, right? Yeah, he's the yeah, tech okay. guy, he's basically. Tech guy. He's a smart tech guy that understands the business side, right? So he gets like stuff done. So if you don't know, Zon Jump, Rebate Key, okay. Zon Pages is founded by him. And I've then, heard of these, but uh, <laughs> I'm a teacher, so I'm And really. then we partnered up on Zon Words, and we've also partnered up on Pixelfy Me. So for me to just really share my story and end up partnering with people that I really idolize yeah. in the space, and you know, partner with people that I feel like are way further ahead of me and they're giving me a chance, like I'm pretty thankful for that. So. Okay, who's the third? And Nick. So, okay, and yeah, Nick. Don't forget yeah, about Nick. Yeah, Nick. But I met Nick in, I met him in China uh, along with Fernando. They came out to actually wanted to sell a trade craft meetups in Guangzhou. And that was a lot of fun. Okay, so Ooh. let's see. What is the best book you have read? You've read a lot of books. I wouldn't say I read a lot of books. You've read a lot though in like the past. Like. I mean, I've read a lot ever since I was Started. thinking about quitting my job, right? Because okay, I yeah. felt like I needed some inspiration or I needed to just learn what was going on. First book, oh, the second book I ever read was The 4-Hour Workweek and that just oh, shifted yeah. my mindset about, about do I really have to work 40 hours a week? I definitely work 40 hours a week from time to time now or 50 hours or 60 hours. <laughs> But some weeks I work like 15 hours, right? The whole book is about the premises of like outsourcing some of the tasks you do on a day-to-day -day basis and why there is, you should break the stigma of like always having to work 40 hours a week, right? So that was a big mind shift change and it made me really want to figure something else besides like the standard corporate life. Yeah. And then the second book oh, that there's really- There's another one. <laughs> well, the second book that like was really impactful for me was the Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco or something. And in this book, basically, he talks about a story of uh, maybe I'm making up the story myself, but <laughs> this is what I remember that there's a guy that asked um, this younger kid that he saw with a Ferrari on the Ooh. side of the street. And um, he doesn't remember, like, really what the kid said. This is a true story, right? I'm no, cool. It was in the book. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> But he, the, the kid basically said, or the guy basically realized that 
you know, everyone can be a millionaire and have a Ferrari by the time they're 65. You know, you put okay. it in a 401k and it okay. compounds. But to be younger and have, you know, a Ferrari and have all that money, yeah, you got to take risks, right? And you have to learn True. how to multiply your time, right? And you have to learn how to disconnect trading time for money. Be efficient. Right? So that, that means like essentially you can't be working an hourly job, right? Because you're capped at how many hours you uh, like when you show okay, up for that work, makes sense yeah essentially so with amazon private label we're making money like while this video is like shooting hopefully <laughs> i'm making money so. while you know i'm sleeping making money while um i'm in the bathroom Got and that's it. the whole premises disconnecting time from money got it that sounds like a good book hmm? okay what is your favorite tech tool my favorite tech tool that has really made my life more efficient right now it's a free tool and it's called the website is called use loom, um, use loom. but okay. it's basically we call it loom l-o-o-m but the website is u-s-e loom.com <laughs> <laughs> and basically what it does is it records your screen okay uh, it records what's happening on your screen and then it also records you via your webcam and it records your voice so all the instructions that I give or any like repeatable steps within my business, I just document it via video and then send it off to my team. And this has allowed me to really build this like Wikipedia type of thing yeah. of just like things if you that have questions. I can delegate or outsource. Yeah, or okay. questions, repeatable steps for my team. Okay, makes um, sense. Yeah, and that's basically my favorite okay. tool and it's free. What is your favorite tool like Amazon wise? Like, Amazon wise? Like Jungle Scout. I don't know. What are those other? Um, <laughs> what are those other Amazon? I don't know. My heart. I don't know what my favorite tool is, but I will say the tool that I do admire the most is Jungle Scout. It was literally <laughs> the first tool that software you... that I ever paid for on the internet. I'm pretty cheap. I'm like one of those guys that use like torrents, you know, to like get stuff. So when I saw Jungle Scout come out, I was like. I need that. That is definitely worth the money. You know, that was the first time I was like, I should spend money on this, invest into this software, right? I should make this decision to speed up my private label research. I feel and like I've always seen you use it. So like every day you use it. Yeah, I'm using it every yeah. day. My, my team uses it every day. It's just like a tool that's really well-rounded for like no matter what business model you have, like OA, wholesale, or private label. Makes sense. So, what is your goal for this Q4? Alright, so basically my goal for this Q4, which I already hit, was to spend all my capital on inventory, which was about 150000 this year. So hopefully that rolls over and flips um, into a good paycheck in January. So Let's hope we'll so. see about that. So recently you visited Seattle. So how was visiting Amazon? Okay, so I never thought I, I never thought that because I saw on Amazon and because I have a YouTube channel, you would about actually Amazon, go to their headquarters. That literally Amazon would fly me out to their HQ to get to know me better, right? Yeah. So Amazon's facilitating. I can't. I saw an NDA. I can't speak too much about it. <laughs> Oops. But um, basically, they're trying to facilitate a better two-way conversation between sellers and um, Amazon, right? Like one funny thing that like blew my mind is they didn't know what like giveaways were. That they didn't know that what? we use giveaways as part of our launch process. You know that, right? Oh well, yeah. yeah, yeah. But see, I did. I was just surprised they didn't under. They didn't. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Amazon's a massive corporation, and they're really, really rolling out a lot of changes that are gonna really support us as sellers. But they're having, they could better, you know, relay that information out to us. Uh -huh. And that's, you know, something we're trying to figure out together. Okay. Um, so but, were you able to like voice <clears throat> your struggles as a seller, as an Amazon seller? Uh, yes. Uh, I can't just, go yeah, the, I was like, you don't have yeah. to say anything more than that. Yes, it, yes or no. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's why like I pulled the group. I was like, hey, like what are things like you guys hate about selling on Amazon? Okay, and, that's you know, good. I really made sure that Amazon heard like what we the sellers like freaking hate about Amazon, all right? And they know it. And it was really funny to just kind of see them like, ooh, like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but at least they know now. They have some sort of idea. Exactly. Um, they now hear your struggles. Okay, so then also, you went to Ty Lopez's house. That's who you went to, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> How was that? <laughs> How was seeing like his like YouTube videos come to life? 
Yeah, so just basically hanging out at Ty's house was, it was really interesting. You know, at first I never really respected the guy. I always thought he was like a huge scammer and uh, just I think I Googled, took... I Googled him actually the other day because uh -huh. I was trying to make sure it was Ty Lopez. And it, the first question says, is Ty Lopez a scammer? Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. He's a very controversial guy, right? So yeah. some people love him, some people hate him. Uh, but he's known for the look at my, uh, uh, like, my Lamborghini, Ferrari right? And, Not yeah, the Ferrari. Oh, he has a Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's the Lamborghini jokes. Uh, and then it's, like, all about his, like, bookshelves. Yeah, everything. I remember seeing that. But it was bookshelves. crazy to see that in person and just, like, really be like, whoa, like, this is it. This is, like, where he works out of. Like, his whole team was there. And, you know, like, after, like, meeting him and meeting his team, I, like, totally changed my perspective of him. Uh, just because I really found out he was a legit entrepreneur, even before, like, he became the persona of Ty Lopez, right? Um, he really does know all that knowledge uh, that he, he, <laughs> he talks about. Yeah. Um, and he's made his, like, millions doing, like, other things back in the day through internet marketing before, like, really building the persona. And he's also a pioneer of that in the space, too. Like, I don't know if being an internet marketer was a thing, really, 100% before Ty Lopez arrived on the scene. Hmm. Okay. What was the most valuable conference you attended and why? Um, you he he went to a lot. <laughs> after I quit my job, I went on a huge binger of just meeting a lot of Amazon sellers through yeah. different conferences and different workshops because I just wanted to immerse myself and learn everything that I could. Yeah. However, you don't the thing you're going to realize is that most Amazon conferences are the same. They're gonna talk about the same thing on stages and after a while it gets old. Yeah. The real knowledge and you know learning is like done by the water coolers at lunch, the people you sit next to, right? Yeah. Make sure you introduce yourself to the people you sit next to. Uh, be friendly, like everyone's there be, and most people don't know anyone, right? Yeah. So you never know who's like sitting right next to you. That's it could very be true. Like a huge seller and might give you that one tip that could change your business. Um, or it could be your business partner like Fernando and Nick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, you know, or Leo. And basically the way it worked out, the, the best conference that I don't recommend going to, <laughs> it was called CES, right? And it's by CES. Jim Cockrum. This was like the first ever conference I went to. Uh -huh. um, Where was it at? It was in Louisville, Louis Louisville. Louisville? Yeah, Kentucky. Kentucky, okay, yeah. And you know, the, what I got most out of it was seeing that people who sell on Amazon really do make a living off of just Amazon and they do live happy lives and they do, you know, are like free from like the constraints of time, right? They yeah. work when they want and they, you know, enjoy hanging out with their families. They take vacations, they go on like whatever trips they want. And when I saw that in person. Is that what they talked about? No, I'm talking about just like the people I met. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the people I met at the conference like really inspired me because like I realized that this whole Amazon thing wasn't a scam. No. There's like tons and hundreds of people like really, you know, living their lives doing R A yeah. O A private label wholesale. Like different and, aspects and still exactly really enjoying exactly. the business and the, having their own time. Yeah. Okay, how do you like being in the education space um, Amazon? Funny question coming from a teacher. <laughs> But basically, you know, it's been one of the most rewarding things, you know, just because I'm able to like give back to basically kind of like the community that kind of gave to me, right? Yeah. So I would have never been like where I am unless there was like free knowledge out there, unless there was conferences out there yeah. or like people in the Facebook group just having conversations and me just researching, right? And that's how I learned everything about my journey and for me to be able to kind of teach others in a way that I feel like is right. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, Your it's beliefs. the most effective, you know, yeah. uh, and from my perspective, it makes me feel like I'm spreading good knowledge within like the Amazon ecosystem compared to uh, like some of the other gibberish that might be in the space. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. What would you be doing if you weren't selling on Amazon? You know, I think about this sometimes. Well, what did, what did, you, what did you do before this? I do people know what you actually did. You say always corporate life. Uh, well, well, in my corporate life, I was a management consultant with a focus in technology. So I kind of just help companies 
figure out how to uh there's different projects i was working on but like i would work on like erp projects which is basically implementing like big software into like huge companies to monitor like different like Security, things right no like the best example would be like say like hilton wants to keep track of like how many pillows they have okay right so they like track pillows. it yeah but like you know hotels like lose pillows and they have to reorder pillows mm -hmm. but so they want to know how much pillows to have on hand at every hotel and like tracking that and tracking payroll between like all the different ones like okay. you need an erp system to really aggregate all that information okay so that's what i helped with yeah but um, what would you be doing would you still be doing that is the question um i don't know i mean i enjoyed it to a certain extent so maybe if i never did quit that job i would still be doing it yeah but sometimes i do think about how happy i would be if i sold ice cream you know <laughs> like an ice cream shop i sold ice cream yeah in a in a shop yeah. on the side of the beach and i would go surf during the day and just live a very simple but not very lavish life right so i always think about like i don't know it's because like he's that, never told me this <laughs> well it's way. basically because like my parents didn't have a lot of money right and they yeah. were happy people so i mean i don't think you have to have money yeah to be happy but right now like you enjoy amazon I'm, yeah i enjoy amazon and enjoy like trying to make more money yeah fair enough fair enough okay then i have my last question is if you could start over what would you do differently if I could start over, I wish I doubled down like earlier, right? So when I first started uh, Amazon, which was three years ago, or what two years ago mean? with a private label product. Does that mean like do double what you thought you needed? Like, what uh, does that mean? Basically, it just means that I would capitalize on what was working. So, you know, back in the day, it was really easy to launch products and land on a first page. Okay. Um, and I was, you know, my first product came out, and my second product came out, and my third product came out, and I made money on all of those. Uh -huh. And it was super easy to get to the first page, and I didn't realize it wouldn't last forever. Okay. Right? So I wish, like, during that time, I realized the opportunity that I had, and, like, got more money took out loans and like really doubled down and built uh launch more private label products okay because uh, yeah. i can't imagine like where my business would be if, if you had I done that at the beginning that. yeah okay that makes yeah. sense well that's it you did very good <laughs> i'm done <laughs> Okay, so basically that concludes the Q&A session yes. with Kathleen, my girlfriend. So if you guys have any questions, though, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions for Kathleen, <laughs> uh, I think us... we should do a video where he asks me questions about yeah. what my teaching life. We should do that on my channel that I don't have. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of like more of like questions of like, what is it like to date Anthony? Like, someone that works a uh, lot, what is it like dating? Me? But I don't know. <laughs> well, whatever questions you guys have, just let us know. Put it in the comments below and we will go ahead and possibly make another video about that. Yes. All right. Until next time. See you guys. Bye.